In this video, we will now consider sliding or kinetic friction. Once the object begins to slide, the frictional force becomes constant. So you may remember in a previous video, we had plotted a pulling force versus friction and that we had attached a spring to a block and that spring we had pulled with a particular force and for a while the object did not accelerate and the friction force continued to increase until it reached a point which was the maximum static friction and then after that we see that there's kind of a jagged weird and then there is a constant frictional force in which if you pull with more force this object begins to accelerate. This area where you reach this constant force and the object is accelerating is the kinetic friction force. So once it begins sliding the force becomes constant with the magnitude that is directly I'm sorry not direct is proportional to the normal force. And actually you could say it's directly proportional because that's what it is. That means that the kinetic friction force F sub K is equal to some constant times the normal force. So this is the coefficient of friction or kinetic friction and this is the magnitude of the normal force. Now this coefficient of kinetic friction it will always be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction in fact it's generally less than indicating that this force is smaller than the maximum force that you have. So you may notice this if you try to push a car or try to push a block that after the thing begins to slide it actually becomes easier to push it than it was before. One of the interesting things that you might not expect is that the magnitude of the sliding friction force is independent of the relative motion of the two surfaces. This means that if the object slides at a faster speed, the friction force doesn't go up. Another kind of equally interesting thing, although I didn't put it in the notes, is that you might think that if the object was laid, for instance, in one particular play with a very large surface area versus having maybe, say, a taller block, with a very small surface area that the side that had the big surface areas since it would have lots of bumps on it and be rubbing against the table would have a bigger force than if it was made very small with the surface area. It turns out that's not true. While it is true that there may be fewer bumps that are banging into each other if we go back to our picture in the previous video about the rough surface there in fact will be deeper and they'll have to push up harder each one of those bumps. So it's kind of like the case where you can have something that gives a hundred dollars and there's five of them so you get five hundred dollars or you can give five hundred give one dollar. In this case when it's narrow and doesn't have as much surface area each one of the little bumps provides a larger normal force and produces a bigger component of friction here there's a lot of things pushing up and so each one has a smaller friction force but there are a lot of them just such that it cancels. So the size and area of the block here does not matter on the friction force. The last little thing that's kind of interesting about the friction force is what about what it's made of? 
it doesn't make a difference whether you slide, for instance, a rough sandpaper uh, across, say, a block, or if you push the block across ice. And the answer is yes, it makes a difference. Where is that in our formula? It's all contained in the mu. Everything about the nature of the materials is contained inside the mu. So the coefficient of kinetic friction contains all the information about the nature of the two surfaces, how rough they are, what they're made of, so forth. Another thing that we find out about friction, of course, is the direction of the sliding friction is in the direction that opposes motion. Not all friction opposes motion, but all sliding friction opposes motion. Rolling friction, for instance, like your tires, or walking friction, like the friction on your feet as you push, you can actually use that to speed up. But in the case of sliding objects, the friction always opposes the motion. Now, let's look at an example problem in the next video.